Welcome everyone, it's Aussie Tech Heads, episode 268 on the 15th of December 2011, Thursday night, live.thesecrethub.com. Welcome Lounge, welcome Eric and welcome listeners. How you doing Eric? Hi mate, how you going? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, how's your week been? My week has been uh, not too bad actually, um, no stress so far. Good, stress free, that's what we like. That's what we like. All right, so uh, yes, lounge, live.thesecrethub.com. Join us live every Thursday night for the recording of the show. Skype in to Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, Skype in through the show. Uh, keep it brief and uh, tell us what's on your mind. Tell us what's on your little tech mind. And audio only on the Shoutcast system. Live video, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. The paper comes out twice a day with some articles. <clears throat> from uh, tech articles and all sorts of articles, really, from from the from the followers of Aussie Tech Heads Twitter account, and you can find the paper and subscribe to the paper at paper. dot aussietechheads. dot com. dot au, uh, and also uh, yeah, thanks to Brad and Tech Webcast for the show at seven o'clock. We start at around seven thirty, seven forty every Thursday night. So uh, join us, find us on iTunes if you're listening to us streaming through a cafe somewhere. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So, Eric, your machine's going all right. You've, you've had an addition to the family. I have had, let's just put it this way, I have spent way too much money <laughs> on this setup. You'll oh, be right. Oh, my God. If this doesn't work, I'm jumping out of a first floor window. <laughs> so, um, so now you, you've gone from, you're not using the laptop, the PC laptop anymore? No, I am hooked up into a, uh, a, a Dell but it's a business opti Optiplex, three-year warranty job. Right. But if I'm going to get it, get something, I, I'll get a, a, rather than a consumer-grade one, I'll get a business-grade one. And yes. uh, so far, it seems to be working fine. Yes, yes. So there's no, uh, there's, you're not getting any feedback tonight or loopbacks or whatever, but the test normally does come with uh, chewing the fat, the show that posts. Indeed. That, uh, Indeed. that comes after Aussie Tech Heads. So if you haven't heard of Chewing the Fat, get on the iTunes and download it because there'll be one tonight or one after the Aussie Tech Heads tonight. So Chewing the there Fat. Is a, there, is a, there is a quick one up there now if you go and uh, check your, um, what do you call it, check your feeds. I've just put up my, a video of my setup here at home. Yes, and if you want to have a look at uh, Eric's podcast setup, he has got a video. It shows all the computers he uses and the technology that he's, that he's uh, become accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> to to bring it's us his spent, uh, it's spent much 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 more money than I thought I would. Yes, but it's all good now. It's all good. So um, get right. get ready. Your PA's uh, asked for a link, and I'll send that to you now. PA. Uh, all right. So just put in a chat so there. while you're sending that link across, uh, yes, we'll still. He's had some Bowen therapy, whatever that is. I'm going to PA in the lounge. He's put a link up to Bowen therapy. We're going to have a look at Bowen therapy after the show, and because uh, yeah, it wore, wore him out apparently, he was he was stuffed. So don't know what Bowen therapy is, but I'm going to find out. Uh, all right, what's been going on? Uh, apart from anything else, I've signed up for new internet, and I think you have too. Have yes. You? yes, yes, yes. The Docs is three. When What's the NBN? I don't care. Well, I will care, but I, I, hopefully I'll be happy enough with uh, two meg up. Uh, you, two and a half? Actually, now that we're on that, Glenn, I've got a couple. I'll read something out to you. This, I, was re I was reading the forums today about, the, um, about this, this very thing. Okay. Yes. This is a dude. He was running on the same modem that I've got, Doxus 2 modem, which is a Motorola SB5100, which is a 10-year-old modem. Yes. And before before he was upgraded, he was doing thirty three down. Yep. Which is which is about right. And one point one up. Right, fair. Then he put his Cisco in <laughs> and used because the Cisco apparently is you can use it as a router as well. Mm hmm So he put the Cisco in and used it as a router and he was only getting forty eight down but getting two point four up. Right. So he's gone one step further and thought, no, I'm gonna bridge it and use and plug it into another router. Instead, which is what I'm going to do. I'm yes. going to use it as a standalone router. Yep. And his download, 114 down, 2.4 up, 5 millisecond ping. And that's just off from the old network? No, no, that's from when he's upgraded. Oh, okay, right, right. Well, that's all right. So he's plugged his, he's, he's unplugged his old modem, yep. put in his new one. Yep. Because even if you were on a 100 megabit line, if you only had a Doxus 2 modem, mm. it's not going to do 100 megabits because the, the, the firmware in the modem doesn't allow it. 
Right. So he's plugged in his new modem. Yep. He was getting a 15 second, uh, 15 millisecond ping on the Doxus 2. And as soon as he plugged in the Cisco and bridged it into another router, 5 millisecond ping. Nice. 2.4 up, 114 down, people. Beat that, Conroy. <laughs> now you're um, well done. Ask him; he'll swear at you. So now <laughs> yes. is um now because you're going, you're aiming to get a Cisco modem. Because I looked into it, as you suggested. I've, I've ordered, I've ordered the Cisco, and she said, "Look, it's a bit of a turkey shoot." Yes, that's um, what I've... they've stopped ordering the Ciscos. Yes, but they've got a lot of them, and right. when they run out, you'll start getting the Netgear. Now, because so for... if you get them, if we we've, we've ordered early enough, that there's a good chance we'll get the Cisco. Yes. Well, unfortunately, I was speaking to just some some girl that didn't really know anything <laughs> and i mean anything i'm saying how i'm saying i just want to confirm how fast down and how fast up it is and she goes oh let me check and she checks and she comes back and she goes well it's a hundred it's a hundred meg down and a hundred k up and i went no that's not right <laughs> And I said, you know, you got to speak the same language. You got to do apples with apples. You know, it must, I'm, I'm looking at two meg up. It's two meg up. She goes, no, no, a hundred k. Unless she meant a hundred meg up, that'd no. be nice. I just thought, I'd look, happy with that. every question I asked her, it wasn't happening. It just wasn't happening. She was just some, obviously some girl. So look, I'm gonna be really. I always ask to speak to their supervisor. Look, I'm gonna be pretty tough on these guys when they come out because I'm gonna say I want I want the the plug point in put into the house in a certain position and I don't care what they have yeah. to do to do it and I'm just going to say where are you going to put it I'm going to put it right next to the computer <laughs> so yep. under the, your desk the shortest possible lead yep. that I can get yep well it's from my from my router to the cable it's less than a meter yes well that's good that's out that's what you need but uh, yeah so look I asked for a, the Cisco modem she goes what does it matter and I, I'm, I tried to explain to her, and I'm saying, well, you know, other, yeah. than, other than Netgear is a piece of pus, it matters a lot. Mm, but uh, but I read reviews on both. You know, there's bad and good, good and bad on both. But I just happened to yeah. probably lean towards the Cisco, like you. But anyway, we'll see what yeah. happens. We'll see what happens. I won't be unpacking it if I look. I don't know if I get a Netgear. Am I going to unpack it, or am I just going to send it back? What am I going to do? Uh, well, if you send it back, then it's going to be it could be days, weeks but, before you get another well, one. It doesn't matter. Problem. It doesn't but, matter. But you know what? The thing is, though, the good thing is, you unpack it, try it on, mm. and you can always ring them and say, oh, look, this is crap. Yeah. And wait for them to send you one. But in the meanwhile, you've still got the use of one. Yeah. Because they will replace it if it's, if it's, if it's buggered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, so look, I suppose, like, if I'm going to get, uh, if I'm going to get close to 100 down and two up, with the, if I get a net gear, well, am I going to keep that? Will that be... Will that be good? Yeah, that should be enough. Look, look if, if, if you do some testing over 24 hours, 48 hours, and it, it's, it's fairly, you know, the average speeds are holding up, mm. yeah, you'd probably keep it. You'd probably keep it. Yeah, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to find out what's going on. When's your, oh, yeah, that's, you, you, so you're just plugging it in, that's right. They, they've told me they've got to come out. They're just sending me the motor because I've already got cable. They don't have to come out for an install. They just send mm. me a motor and I just plug it in. Yep. And then with the, with the motors, they're a, bit, they're a bit funny with the cable. You plug it in. And then your web browser comes up because it says, oh, this modem hasn't been registered. Yep. Do you want to register now? You say yes. And you've got your, um, you'll need your Big Pond login, which they should have, they yes. would have issued you by now or very soon. Yep. Um, then you log in with that Big Pond login. You go click, click, click. Your red modem is now registered. And when that's finished, you log into your Big Pond account and it should say Big Pond Ultimate. Right. Not big pond. If it says big pond elite, it means you're still on the 35 megabit down one. If that's the case, you just get on the phone straight away, and they go, "Oh, sorry about that. We'll fix that right now." And they just flick the switch. Yep, yep. And yep. then you know, so, you refresh your page, and a few hours later, it might be okay. So, are you going to keep? Are you going to go for the two connections like you had been on, or are you just going to be? No, no. Well, I haven't. I'm running on one now since I cancelled that ADSL, mm. and and I haven't got another one because. Um, I'll see how this goes. You know, with two and a half up, I should be okay. Yeah. So now I don't know. Did you talk dollars, or the dollars would probably be the same for you? Um, like dollars for, are exactly the same for me. No different. Yeah, because I've got. Uh, look, I, I got on. I got on the website. I can't understand the website at all. Like it's just crazy. Like, it was. Um, I'm, I've gone for the two hundred gig uh, plan, and right. on the on the website it said what seventy nine dollars. 
and then it had the picture of the blue phone, which I think means, what does that mean? Does that mean it's $79 a month if it's bundled? Hang on, let me tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll go now. I'll have a look. Well, I'll let me let me is. bring this up as well so we can so we can all have a bit of a... All right, so you're on 200 gigs, yep. right? Bundle. It says here 99 a month. Is that right? Or that the no, there is... That's... You're on the Telstra site. No, Telstra I'm... or Big Pond? Big Pond. Oh, it is Big Pond. Big Pond? Yeah, Big Pond Ultimate. Yeah. So oh, okay. Hang on a minute. 24-month plan. Seventy. It says from seventy nine ninety five. So you jump into that, click into there. Now two hundred. Twenty four month plan. Um, two hundred gigabytes. And now, what phone system are you getting? Well, I'm just getting the. What? What? Which phone plan? The the, the just the um, home line budget. Yeah, whatever the minimum is. Yeah. Yeah. So as you That's can. That's right. So does that mean seventy nine ninety five? Yes. 24 months. Yep. Is that include the phone? Yes. So it's 79... That includes your line rental. As well. As well. That's as, all inclusive. As well as the internet. Yes. Right. So all you'll be paying for is your phone calls. Yes. Right. Because now when this woman was talking to me, she's telling me it's 89. And I could... Yeah, it's, you know, no, it's 89, but then because... You've got your phone with them, as well as the internet. You get the ten dollars credit. But she was that telling me that uh, she had no idea. Fair income had no idea. I don't know what she oh, was no, doing. No, no, they're useless. Well, as soon as as soon as that happens, if, they, if when you get your first bill and there's no credit in there, yep. you just ring up and say, "Look, I've got my phone. Take a screenshot of what you're looking at now, so you can send it to them if they argue with you." Yep. And um, just say, "Look, it's you know I'm supposed to get a ten dollars credit because I've got my phone with the internet, so it's eighty eight less 10, 78, right. or whatever it is. See, because I was looking, the way I was looking at it, and I'll just show you this page here again, the way I was looking at it is without a phone, it was 109. And so I thought, okay, well, 109 yes, against 79, well, I thought, well, that 79 mustn't be with a phone. No, no, it is. Right, when you, okay. When, you, when okay. you pick the phone, yep. it, you, you pay more if you don't bundle your phone. Right. And, and can I get it any cheaper if I bundle more things? What will happen if you... Put your iPhone on there, yep. for example. Yes. Um, like Kim's phone. What are you paying? Is she with Telstra? Yes. All right. What's she paying now? Uh, is it 64 a month? Or 59 right, okay. for the plan? What will happen is you, you won't get any more off this plan that you're going on. What you what they'll do is they'll take 10 bucks off her plan. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you throw your phone on. Uh, on the one bill. If you put yep. everything on one bill, yep. they'll take 10 bucks off. Overall, you'll pay 10 bucks less. It'll be 10 bucks off her Yep. plan and then 10 bucks off yours yep. if you throw Foxtel in there there'll be another 10 or 15 dollars off right. that as well okay I know where I'm going so also included with my 89 apparently 89 right is she goes oh you get the T-Hub and I go do I really want it no you don't want you don't want the T-Hub that's a piece of pus that's what I said do I and I said how much is the plan without the T-Hub <laughs> and she no, goes 88 yeah it was an extra dollar bucks. yeah so it was a dollar for this T-Hub I went oh I'll chuck it in no, for a buck. No, don't do the tea hub. It's a piece of pasta. Is it really that bad? I've got one here. Yeah. Oh, it's it's bad, dude. It's terrible. She, I don't, I didn't even know what it runs. What does it run? Is it um, ru run an end? What's it run? Android or what's it? Or or puzzle? I don't know. No idea. Yeah, I don't. No look, idea. I tried to Google it. I couldn't find out either. But look, I've heard the screens are, are, are crappy as well. But anyway, enough of bloody Telstra. <laughs> the only good thing about T hub is you can watch anything streaming through there so you can plug the t-hub straight into the back of an led screen for example right right and um it doesn't count towards your um your plan right is it is you can it stream anything from the internet from the t-hub and it will not come off your 200 gig or anything yeah if you're using the t-hub to watch anything yeah whether it be movies um you know because they, they 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 push live um, free to air TV through it as well, right. so you can watch Channel Nine through an LED screen, blah blah blah, and it's all using the internet. It's all using your connection, but it doesn't count towards your um, allocation. Right. So it's basically free. It's free data, basically. Yeah. Right. So, so is it is it good enough just to chuck it at the kids? Will they use it? Oh, look, they'll probably use it. I don't know if there's much on there for kids, though. Yeah. The truth. That's what I know. Like, you can't download stuff for it. 
I don't know. I'll look you into can it. Record. You can record on it. Before I open it, I'll look into it. And, um, yeah. And, yeah, no, you I'll can set... always send it back. Yeah, yeah. Because you can record on it. If you right. find a show, you can record a show. And right. it's, it's a, it's a set-top spot, but it's mm. also a um, DVR that right. records the internet show. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So that's about it then. All right. <laughs> Where are we up to? Let's start with some what's been going on in the world. Well, what has been going on in the world? Well, Commonwealth Bank. What's going on with the Commonwealth Bank? A year to the day, apparently. A year to the day. Oh, really? They got more problems. The same problem. Commonwealth Bank customers were unable to withdraw money from ATMs, pay FPOS, or access their online banking for hours and hours, maybe a couple, on Wednesday night. Apparently, I don't. Um, I don't bank with them at all. Never have. No. Don't want to. Look, I banked with them when I was a kid. Obviously, when I went to school. And yes, that's the only time I banked with them. Yes, correct. Look, I found I found my old passbook uh, from school when I was I don't know maybe about thirty two, you know, and I found the old grey passbook somewhere, and I went, oh yeah, that's got like six hundred bucks in it. Cool as, oh, yeah. cool as. So I went down, and I chucked it at the lady, and I said, oh, up, can I update my passbook? I just want to withdraw and close. So anyway, the machine goes goes for about five minutes, you know, and she's going through passbooks, and I said, oh, can I close that now? How much do I get? She goes, oh, it's all been eaten up in fees. Oh, and I went, no. what? So and I said, your savings account from as school, a kid, from school, they took in oh, fees. Wow, in fees. So I wasn't happy. I said, "Are you are you kidding me?" I think it was actually look on 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 better recollection, it might have only been a couple of hundred bucks, but it didn't matter what it was. I was I was I remember I was filthy. I was filthy. I just went, That's "All right, unbelievable." Yeah. Hey, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. I'm, I'm just on the Google Plus page here, and it says here, William Tompkinson is hanging out right now. Is he? Where, who, where, <laughs> what's he hanging out of? <laughs> hanging out of his ass. Must be paid for. <laughs> All right, so, so sticking, with the, sticking with the banks, ANZ has also had a couple of issues. Now, right, what have they done? Well, what have the ANZ done? They're, they've got statement issues. They've only just launched this, apparently. Uh, their statement. Oh, really? Yes, yes, because uh, look, my, my brother's got an account, the ANZ, that I look after, and it's a business account, and I just thought, why can't you get online statements? I've never heard of such such um, uh, old age way of doing banking, you know? Because <laughs> I'm with the NAB, I get online statements all the time for everything, I think it's great. And anyway, so they've just, re- <laughs> they've just released this ANZ online statements, and then now it's been taken away again. ANZ has disabled customers' online banking statements after investigation found a significant security flaw in its service. The bank has temporarily, yeah, taken it down. So, wah, wah, wah. Um, the, because the statements, this is the, the reason for it, because the statements are not tied to specific browser sessions and do not expire, identity thieves could potentially plunder troves of statements stored in a browser, in browser histories. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is bad. That's bad technology right there. Yeah. They're badly coded. What's going on there? Mm. But apparently they reckon that it's all, um, uh, you know, all the banks could be at fault, but, no, I don't know. They do open up in a different browser, but... They do. Oh, well, mine just know. opens up in a, in a PDF document straight up. Well, what are you doing open up doing your banking on a, on a in, in, in internet cafe anyway? Well, you wouldn't. That's the thing. I only do my banking at home or on my iPhone mm. with Westpac. I've got that, that Westpac app. Right, you know, yes. like I'll pay a bill. I think, oh, shit, I've got to pay that bill. Yeah. And I'll just be, you know, at a set of traffic lights or something and I'll just pay it. Oh, look, the best thing that I've found is that, I don't know, probably all banks are the same, but with because I'm with the NAB at the moment, and uh, and they when, as soon as I get a bill in, I can program it to pay it on a certain date. So I don't know. Yes, that's yeah. right. I do the same. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, how that's easy right. is that? And you don't forget yeah. it and it's always paid and it's so because I always pay it after the end of after my credit card comes out, statement comes out, so therefore I get the extra twenty days or whatever it is. Right, so, right. So yeah, so that all works for me. So that's good. Good work. Good work. Yeah. Uh you got any stories over there, Mr well, Franco? You wanna uh, hear any Apple reviews? Apple year in review, two thousand and eleven. Well, I've got an Apple story as well. Yes, we we can do those. Have you? you? I know which one you've got, and I've got that one also. Oh, okay. Well, you've but probably been peeking at my review. notes. Because <laughs> you've shared it with me. <laughs> it's a, all right, I'll start this. Despite Apple's many marketing, business, and technology achievements, this year, 2011, will be remembered as the year that Steve Jobs died. 
consider these these 11 other highs and lows for Apple in 2011. Uh, now they just blah, 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 blah. Um, here we go. If you don't count the loss of co-founder and former CEO Steve Jobs, who rescued Apple from bankruptcy in 1997 and left, left it as one of the most valuable and admired companies in the world, he left Apple too soon. But apart from Jobs' passing and a few missteps, Apple thrived. The value of its stock increased 22% this year so far. Its leading competitor in the mobile arena, Google, that's you, Android, saw the value of its stock rise only 5%. Apple's longtime rival in the computer market, Microsoft, saw its stock slip more than 5% during the same period. So that's an interesting statistic. Mm. The company also continued to foment a schism in the computing device market, luring customers with the iOS devices, iPads, etc. Now, there's now as you know, Microsoft's Bill Gates is in Australia, live, uh, holidaying Correct. in Sydney. Now, if you're interested, there's he has a little bit, not a not a little bit, he just probably passing sentence or two. Uh, it does talk about Steve Jobs in an interview I saw on the Sydney Morning Herald website. So if you want to see a little yes. video, just just jump on the, what is it, smh.com.au, have a peek at that. It's, in, it's interesting enough to go and have a look, you know. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Look, they've been rivals for a long time, and Bill Gates will never say anything horrible about him. No, no, which is fair enough. Like, right. why, why would you want to, well, you can't no. now, can you? You can't, you can't right. come out and say bad things now. Poor bloke, yeah, exactly. dead. Bit well, late. Yeah, but anyway, Apple's um, opening up stores still, and they've opened up a f their fl their latest flagship store opens in New York, and it's opened in Grand Central, t the Grand Central Terminal Building. Wow, yeah, massive place, Grand Central Station. Massive is, I reckon, an understatement. I reckon it's an understatement. Yeah, it's quite big. There's a picture there if you if you're watching on the video. There's a picture of the um, opening. Thousands of people just cramming into this thing. What is it, a train station or something? Is that what it is? Yeah, you, it's, it's still part of the train station, but they've taken up some space in the middle of it by the looks of it. Because I've got a few more pictures here. Just if you're, if you're on the podcast, just when you get a chance, Google uh, Apple's latest store and just have a look at some of these pictures. Uh, the joint's massive. Like, look yeah, at that. Huge. It's massive. It's just, it's, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Like, it's beautiful. It's absolutely oh, beautiful. Well, they know how to do Let's face it, they do know how to do it, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. But it's, it's really nice. They really know how to do it. But have a look. Yeah, look at that. That lady's it's not huge. very happy. Look at that big apple. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's done that in the subway, one of the subway hubs. 214 square metres of floor space. Uh, the store that's is one huge. of Apple's Quite largest... Big. Apple stores. Uh, now, Apple store by numbers, total number worldwide, 360. Total number of employees, 36,000. Uh, yeah, there's some other couple of stats there, which, you know, just all about dollars, which makes me upset. <laughs> number of visitors to all <laughs> Apple stores over time, more than 1 billion. Number of visitors the yep. year worldwide, more than 300 million. So, so that's, that's a bit. That's a lot. That is a lot. That, that's, that's, that's crazy stuff. But um, yeah, that is that's crazy stuff. But now probably like one of the biggest, oh, I feel one of the biggest stories of the week. You may not, but I do. I found it quite nice. The JB Hi-Fi, they've um, they've opened up their beta service for, for for music streaming for Australians. Did you saw this, Eric? Yes, I do. I'm on their site right now as you speak. You are. I can I can get onto I that. Site. I am regi registri registering myself as you speak. Nice. So for the first 30 days, you can register for free for 30 days. And the good thing about it, you don't even have to put your credit card in. Not yet you don't. No. no I think they remind you at the end of it. Right, yeah. So, you, so to try it out for free, you just have to have a mobile phone and it sends you a code because obviously they're sending it's a code. Right, punching the code, yeah. Yeah, they're sending you the code just to make sure you're in Australia, I would imagine. Now, it was launched last Tuesday, jbhifi.com. No, what is it? Now.jbhifi.com.au. You've got the yeah, services called. Yeah, .com.au, yeah. Service is called now. Now, I, I found it like I've heard bad reviews. I've heard good reviews, um, but I, like bad reviews were it's cluttered. It's it's no good. It's it's you know nothing's there. But look, I th I found it quite um quite good. Like you can search for music. Let's search for something. Let's search for something really inconspicuous. Well, I'll give you some stats. Well, before I do that, I'll give you some stats on this on this on this thing. Where's my notes gone? Now the um, it is a pretty bad site because. 
I'm playing something now, and I can't stop it. <laughs> yeah, down the bottom. Oh, down the bottom. Okay. <laughs> so there's more than there's more than 10 million songs, and on launch there was a hundred thousand artists, more than three million songs. So so 10 million songs. What's this? More than 10 million songs on launch. There was a hundred thousand artists. Uh, which is representative of 90% of all digital tracks consumed in Australia. So it's got. Well, a so they've pretty much got the. What they've done is they've done what Apple should have done a long time ago, it's with subscri subscription service. Hmm. Look, I think this is the way to go. I think this is this is going to go off. It's uh, a 12 month subscription. It works out to be six dollars. Not bad sound. Six dollars. Not bad sound. Yeah, no, that's that's all right. Six dollars sixty seven a month. Uh, it's unlimited access and listening to millions of songs. Uh, currently available on the PC and Mac, the portable mobile device apps are coming out early next year. Now you can create playlists and share with friends. So let's 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 go back to the site and <clears throat> let's have a little bit of a. I'm playing around now. Would you like me to mix you up? Mix, do a do a mixtape for you. Right. <laughs> Look, I think it's it's. I don't mind the site. What's wrong with the site? Oh, Except for fine. all those sorries I'm getting. You can stuff your stories in a sack, JB. <laughs> What's That's going right. on there? Okay, sorry. You need to sign in or register to access this page. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, oh, it takes a while. It takes a while, but it's not bad. Okay, let's let's type in. Um, it's a it's a it's a quite a fast site too. Let's Very see. fast. We'll type in an old person, Marty Robbins. Let's see. Let's Marty see. Marty Robbins. Um, hang on. What was that song? Marty. No, remember Marty your own? Marty. Um, um, denim something. Denim and lace, that one. That's the one. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Oh, cool. Hang Bloody on. Oh, there's Denny Hines. You can give her a bit of a slagging off. Oh, she's not on there, is she? Her. Hang on, Marty yeah. Robbins. I just want to find someone else. See how good they're. Oh yeah, there, he comes Frank up Sinatra. in the. Is he on there? Here we go. My net might be a bit slow because I'm streaming and everything. Oh, here's one big iron. Let's have a listen. How, how fast is? And he's here to do some business with a big iron on his hip. It's good sound. A big iron on his hip. In this town there lives a little this one. by the name of... Like a wild new cowboy came in. A wild as the hot. West Texas way. <laughs> oh, oh, how do you stop it? And the bottom dude. Yeah, so there you go. You can make a playlist. I can see that that's, and you can you can share your playlist. I reckon that's great. You know, you, you're gonna get, follow, you just share DJ's playlist. You know, and you'll be you'll be getting all the all the top songs, and you listen to them for free. Well, for six dollars sixty seven unlimited a month. I reckon it's good. Wait till the. Not ha, bad. the why is the site shocking, Milo? Turn it up. Milo, open your eyes. Maybe get your eyes on. <laughs> 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 no, tell okay, Milo. Milo, tell us why you think it's no good. But anyway, anyway, that, that's that's. And you the, know what? Send in the complaint. Send in an email. <laughs> Put it down. But anyway, look, I think it's going to be all right. JB recommends and Charles. Like, this, all right, this, is this the end of the CD? Really buying CD? Why oh, would you yeah, buy CDs yeah. when you can do this? So, what's a CD cost these days? Thirty bucks. Thirty still? bucks. Oh, that's five months subscription just there. Well, that's right. Yeah, well, yeah. But see, take. you know, and it's clutter. It takes up time. Data is getting cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so. But apparently, when the uh, when the iPhone or when the portable devices come out, it, they're going to be you'll be able to cache your music as well. Well, so, see, that's what I was going to ask. Can you just sort of sort of download it, download the ones or cache the ones you want to listen to over and over again, so you're not mm. constantly. Um, you, using data yeah you must be able to like set your playlist save a playlist and then probably yeah just just cache it on to your onto your thing because that would that would be that would be perfect hmm. but i thought that was good i thought that was good but uh from yeah. well i've signed up yeah well i haven't i, I signed up today but I, I forgot my password that's why i couldn't log on but uh, yeah now um yeah from the from songs to spoken word what are we doing? Spoken word. This was what are you doing? Spoken word. Now, you now I see you've got an an Australian slash. Um, yeah, this is a bit of an Australian flavour on this one. Um, where are we? Let me go on. Got now, this is about a man right that's in the news at the moment. He's yes, still alive, but only just. <laughs> um, 
Now, the, this is it's called Quarterly Essay 43. Bad news. Murdoch's Australian and the Shaping of the Nation. It's very serious stuff. I'll do my Prudy Harvey voice. <laughs> this year has been seen unpre- unprecedented scrutiny of Rupert Murdoch's empire in Britain. But what about in Australia, where he owns seventy percent of the press? That's a fair bit. So, that's a that's a fair whack. So I won't go into more of that. You can get that off the um, show notes, and I'll just play this grabber right now. It is an unusually ideological paper committed to advancing the causes of neoliberalism in economics and neoconservatism in the sphere of foreign policy. Its style and tone are also unlike that of any other newspaper in the nation's history. The Australian is ruthless in pursuit of those who oppose its worldview, market fundamentalism, minimal action on climate change, the federal intervention in indigenous affairs, uncritical support for the American alliance and for Israel, opposition to what it calls political correctness and moral relativism. It exhibits distaste, even hatred, for what it terms the left, and in particular for the Greens. It is driven by contempt for its two natural rivals, the Fairfax Press and the ABC one of which it seems to wish to destroy altogether, the other of which it seeks to discredit for its supposed left-wing bias and to reshape. Basically, what they're saying is this newspaper is quite right-leaning, which I don't mind. Destroy the lefty commies commies, as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) Um, It's probably how he goes about trying to influence where we're going is what is what probably where it's mm. a bit of a no-no and we get a bit of a you know slap across the wrist. Do you think that that's but obviously? Do you think that he sits down and do you think that that's his agenda to, to try and swing people to his way of thinking, or is it just a? Do I you? think so because you've got to remember in any organisation the culture is set from the top. Mm. So yeah. if if you go into a, a company and it's rotten to the core, it's usually because the CEO is a, a bit of a tool. Yeah. Um, you know, no leadership, blah blah blah. Right. Hence. Look at our current, but in any organisation that's running smoothly, like a you know world war machine, it, that that culture is set from the top. Yeah. So I think that, and he only hires people. I would suspect. I don't know this for sure, but I would suspect he only hires people in senior positions in the newspapers, like editors, etc., managing directors, who have his same views. Yes, possibly, so, possibly. Because then he, they, because otherwise, so they can push his agenda for him because mm. they. They have similar but he's, views. He's, well, he's, he's, yeah, he's in a bit of trouble at the moment with all this phone hacking, though, isn't he? Like, he's oh yeah, he's he's in trouble. That's, he, and that's the other thing. That's the other flip side. See, that's that's cultural too. That's set from the top. So mm. no one argues. To me, I think it's great that he's trying to destroy communism and the socialist crap that goes on mm. in his country. It's how he goes about it is yeah. the issue. Yes. So, that's, so that's the problem. So you might be wondering why why on earth are we talking about this well because you can get a free credit and probably download that book for free if you join audible.com through our website um banner through our website banner there it is right there on the bottom there just at the bottom there if you click on that and uh yeah yeah you help us keep the uh servers running as well as uh getting yourself a good listen so go and do that champs Go and, go and have a listen That's to right. some books. Sign up for another couple of months and go for your life. There's heaps of books. Look, uh, part of the new webpage is going to have all of Eric's tips or recommendations. Uh, there's been a few over the over the past couple of months, which have been really good. All right. So, uh, aussietechheads.com.au. Hit the banner down there, sign up, and, uh, yeah, help us out. All right. And help yourself out. Don't forget that. That's the best part. All right. Uh, right. Let's, let's – what else have we got going here? Um, what else have we got? All right. I'll go, uh, go uh, Microsoft story. I've got a Microsoft story here. All right. Let's do that. Microsoft uses Android mal- malware hysteria to offer free Windows phones. Tell you what, jump on that little opportunity while you can. Yeah. <laughs> so what they're basically doing, they're, because of the – I think this might be more prevalent in, in, in America than it is here. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on with the malware in Australia in regard to Android. But apparently, you know, it's quite a big deal in the state. So Microsoft have come out recently 
um, with a fifty dollar phone, with uh, mm. a Nokia fifty dollar phone touch screen with Windows Seven on it, Windows Phone Seven on it, to um, to try and get into the uh, and take advantage of the the and everyone's freaking out about Android. Yeah. So. Yes, I don't know. Like Android, it seems to be it seems to be everywhere, doesn't it? Like, and and especially like I think Apple by by uh, giving bringing the court case against Samsung, it's, it's done Android no harm at all. Especially Samsung. Everyone has heard of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Mums and dads have heard of it. Everyone's heard That's of right. it. If if you That's didn't right. want to buy an Apple tablet, you, you, the first thing that would come into your little brain would be a, a Galaxy Tab. It, it's done wonders for them. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. But it makes me wonder, though, because even though it is popular, and I agree that it, it you know, they're they're everywhere now. It makes me wonder, though, um, is it coming to a point now that it's because it's so mainstream that you're getting all these problems? People are starting to get fed up. You know, they're going, "Oh, look, this is just too hard." Yes, it was good in the beginning, and yes, it was different. I didn't want to go to my iPhone because it's control and Windows was rubbish and. Mm. And my only other alternative was Android, and it was new, and it was you know the novelty factor and all that sort of stuff. Mm. I wonder if that's over now, because I've heard lots and lots of stories of people going Android and then going, you know what? As soon as my contract's over, I'm going to iPhone mm. or something else. Yeah, well, look, know, I've got a funny feeling they've sort of hit their peak now, and I think there might be a slide coming in the next few years. Well, I also think that the the Windows Phone. I'm I'm quite lo- liking the. Uh the hype about the Windows Phone, especially yeah. if it can be the, you know, the, what what did they call the the front screen, the UI, um, the the, uh, the Metro Metro UI, like that's going to be on your phone, and you're going to be, you know, you got a PC at home, you got your PC in your hand. I think that's going it's to be all a, synced. Apparently, everything's yeah, synced. That's going to be a big it's selling gonna, point. They're going to try and do like an Apple thing where everything syncs up. You know, everything syncs nicely. So. Yeah, whatever you do on the computer replicates itself on the phone and vice mm. versa. But I think Android's and, just, Android's going to keep pumping on because it's it's free for the manufacturers to put on the. Well, this devices. is it. I think I think that's the point. They just they're just pumping them out there. And the problem with Android and the manufacturers, they're coming out with a new phone every week. Mm. You know, you buy a phone. Oh, look at this nice new phone. And next week something else comes out that's cheaper. And you think, oh, great. And apparently and I think the, that's starting to piss off a few people. And apparently the problem that is, uh, is 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 facing these developers for the apps for the Android is that there's so many phones coming out that all the screen sizes are different, and so that you, right. you and they can't develop, they can't change their programs quick enough mm. to cater for all these phones that are. And this is where the fragmentation comes in. The developers are going to get fed up and go, you know what? I know I, I Apple comes out with one phone a year. I can just focus on that. Yeah. So make mate, more money. But who knows? Who knows? A prediction could be just Apple's Windows in the phone space, maybe. But who knows? I think, I think that um, wouldn't surprise me. I well, think, and this is just my guess, Android is going to be relegated to the to the Linux of mobile phones in within ten years. Yeah, I don't and know. It'll be, and it'll be Apple and Microsoft. And yeah. If anyone underestimates Nokia with Microsoft Windows Eight together, I think they're kidding themselves because I think they're going to be a real threat. And I, I'm an Apple fan person. I think they'll be the big three. I think there'll be there's there's probably not room for them all, but there will be all I three. I reckon in five years it'll be one and two, Apple, Microsoft, and they'll, and 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 they could interchange. Mm, yep. One year it's Apple, next year it's Microsoft, and Android will just be there. The virus problem, the development problems, too many phones out there. They'll be just constantly number three, and Rim will be bought out by I don't know who who knows HP. I think Google just got to tighten up a bit, tighten it up. Just like tighten. Yeah, they got to tighten up. Tighten it up, exactly. But the, uh, the yeah, so the Apple appeal has been rejected by the High Court. Now the Galaxy Tab 10.1 on sale by Christmas as soon as stocks arrive. Samsung is well, trying. Yes. Go on. Yep. I've uh, got a. I've got a. I've cut and paste an ad of the Galaxy being sold by Vodafone, and I've got the specs and the pricing right here. All right. Well, I'll just tell you what Samsung had come out and said in their, well, I don't know, their press release or whatever you want to call it after the decision. Samsung Australia is pleased with today's judgment of the High Court of Australia to deny Apple's request to appeal the decision of the full court. The full court of Australia decision on November 30 clearly affirmed our view that Apple's claims lack merit and that an injunction should not have been imposed on the Galaxy Tab 10.1. And I reckon they are just clinking champagne glasses because everyone's heard of them. They'd be going, thank you. Thank you. Yes, so, so what correct. what are the specs of the Galaxy Tab? What are the specs? Now, um, now uh, it's it's the it's only available at Vodafone initially, and I think Telstra are going to come out with it. 
And unfortunately, because it's Vodafone, they won't sell me any <laughs> <laughs> because of their data plans. Their data is just rubbish. Um, it's pre-sale from Vodafone. It's lightweight. It's got honey. But the th- see, it's got honeycomb. It hasn't even got um, butt crack sandwich on it yeah. yet. So, <laughs> yes. so which is a bit of an issue. Um, yeah, but- okay, it's 10.1 screen. Yeah. 1280 by 800 widescreen, full HD video playback with multi-format support, not like Apple. Apple's only M- MP4. Um, it's got a thing called the Social Hub. Mm-hmm. Um, it plays Flash, so there goes your battery life. Um, avail- ability to view and edit Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. What else we got? So here? that's all right. That's all right. That's not bad. Hmm. Um, GSM network support, GSM 850 and 900. So it will run on Telstra's network because they, they run on 850. And UMTS 850, which is also Telstra. So that will work. Uh, media player plays AAC, MP3, ACC, EACC, AMR, AMR, blah, 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 mm. H263, so MPEG4 and H264. So you can see that it's obviously it is much more... Uh, diverse is if that's the word to use than the Apple products. That's why people are flocking to the Android because you can just do a lot more on them. Well, you can do. You don't have to. You know, if you're a, if you feel like using Word documents, well, then you don't. You can keep using mm-hmm. Word documents. So I sort of agree with that. But at the same time, February next year, Mar- uh, Microsoft is coming out with Office for the iPad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, ten got- bucks an app. So it's the 10.1 screen, multi-touch display, 1280 by 800. It's powered by dual-core 1 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor. And as Eric said, runs Honeycomb 3.2. It has a quad-band 3G radio and Wi-Fi, front and rear-facing cameras, 32 gig of memory, which is expandable to, which is expandable via the micro SDHC card. And did you say the product? Oh, the camera. The, the camera. The camera, 3 megapixel autofocus 720p HD, mm. that's for the back, and the front is a 2 megapixel camera. So that's not bad. And, and it only weighs 565 grams. Yeah, right. Uh, 4.99. I don't know if you said that. No, what is it? Yes. No, no, it's not 4.99. No, it's on a plan. You can get them on a plan. I think it's $49 a month for 24 months or 12 months or something. Right. But that includes a data plan. Right, right. Now, if you want to, um, think, if you're thinking of getting something else, maybe something a little bit cheaper, you can go to Audi this week, have a look at one of these things. There's a little median. This is four ninety nine. They're a bit, are they a bit pricey? Four ninety nine. Um, but what's it got? Has it got 3G? 3G, Wi-Fi. Oh, really? Micro yeah. SIM or normal SIM? Micro, micro SD, micro SDHC. Uh, front, right. front and back cameras. 10-inch green. There's a couple of those there. A couple more pictures of this. Who makes it? Who makes this it? This German place called Median. You know, if you go to Audi, they've always got these laptops and and yes, yes, yes. computers and stuff. All this Median stuff. Yeah, well, it's those right. guys. So it's on sale in Audi from 17th of December. So if you're looking for a Christmas present to get someone and, and you're thinking of a tablet that it's uh, running Android, go and have a look at that one. Well, I've never. What's s- that running? What's which version of? Um yeah, honeycomb three point two. Honeycomb. Why is not ice cream? They would keep banging on about ice cream sandwich, and it's not. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe is it just is ice cream sandwich mainly for phones. No, no, I think no, I think um, yeah, it's all it's it's Android's going towards cross platform now, aren't they? Like, well, you know, phones thing all the same. Well, that's what I thought. So this is this that's the other problem. You know, some phones have got them, other phones don't. Tablets come out, and they're still running on bloody, you know. But you Undo your fly dot com. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but 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 you know you're gonna upgrade when it when the upgrade comes out. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, but, you'd upgrade it, but you'd think it'd be just standardised. That's the mm. problem. They've got to tighten it up. Yeah, standardise everything. Tighten people. it up. That's right. They've got to tighten it up. Tighten things up. All right. Now Harvey Norman. We all we all love Jerry, don't we? Now he's uh, he's been go fined, Harvey go. <laughs> he's been fined one point two five million. Well, Harvey Norman has by the federal court. Now they've been naughty. Very naughty, naughty, especially. Very, very naughty. Yes. So, um, I don't know, you know, this is where, you know, he comes on the TV crying about his GST, but you come across some of these stories, you know, where he's got fined for misleading the public, and you go, well, yeah, as if I've got sympathy for you. 
But, uh, well, maybe he's misleading the public because he's in a panic about the GST. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, he could be, I suppose. But anyway, he faced the federal court about misleading advertising involving 3D TVs and his catalogues. Now, apparently, he uh, they advertise a 3D TVs and they advertise apparently or what you know advertise what get a 3D TV, watch the AFL, watch the NRL Grand Finals, blah 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 blah. Advertise it all around the country, but as as we know, the 3D was only available in. I think Brisbane, Newcastle, Sydney and Melbourne, Adelaide and Perth, so just in the capital city. So people out in um, Burke, they could have bought a 3D TV. They've got nothing to watch on it. And they'd have to, so anyway, so they, the court found that a bit dodgy. So that was part of it. And then in a separate matter, between October 2008 and July 2011, they had misleading representation about the existence of certain conditions in the catalogue and website advertising. Now, I'm just going to read this part here because this... Uh, you, you get, you just go. What are they doing? Like this is, this is so wrong. Um, Harvey Norman published its website and distributed catalogues to homes throughout Australia. Uh, the the dominant and plain impression given by both the catalogues and the website was that the good advertised were available at Harvey Norman stores generally. Now, however, there was a condition in all the catalogues that the offers in them were only being made by a single store in each state or territory. How dodgy is that? Now, That's what, pretty dodgy. Yeah, while the website had a condition that the offers appearing on it were only being made by one store in Australia. Like, dodge mm. city. Now, the conditions were in fine print and not prominent and contradicted the main impression otherwise given uh, on the website and the catalogue. Now, this bloke, Justice Collier, in summarising the nature and extent of the misconduct or the Harvey Norman's conduct, said the facts that constituted the contravening conduct painted a picture of an expensive, misleading and calculated campaign of sizeable proportions. Character well, like I said before, the culture of an organisation is set from the top. Mm. So what char- does that tell you about well, that's shocky right. Norman? <laughs> Let's have a look at old Jez. Now, uh, they're characterised by blatant and deliberate disregard of the truth, cynical strategies to capitalise on contemporary sporting events, in the case of the 3D TV thing, and the contemptuous yep. manipulation of the expectations of ordinary consumers in respect of the so-called fine print. Now, Justice Collier ordered Harvey Norman to restrain... No, he's not laughing now. I've just seen the picture <laughs> on the street. <laughs> I picked that one out especially. Just to... That's hilarious. <laughs> so, um... Oh, Jerry. Jerry, call into the show, buddy. Let's just have a chat. Let's just settle you down and give you a cup of tea. So the justice ordered Harvey Norman restrained from engaging in similar conduct for three years. Now, my question was, why three years if it's deceptive conduct and against the hang law? Hang on a minute. Yeah. What? Hang on a minute. <laughs> I got this, hang on. Wait. You, you cannot do this for three years. So that means on the 366th day of, or the first day of the fourth year, it's what, open slather? You can go again. <laughs> go again? That's right. You know, hang on a minute. Right, there's a, right and wrong does yeah. not have a time limit on it. That's right. You're That's either right. a good person or an evil one, and yep. the court doesn't legislate that. Or oh, for three years you're good, and after that it's you're evil, and that's okay. Yeah, you're either that's a right. dickhead or you're not. That's right. There's Black no and gray white. area here. I don't know. That's what I I just couldn't unbe- I couldn't believe it. I don't know what they're doing. Well, what what, what justice, justice Collier? You did a good job, but what are you doing at the end there? Why three years? And uh, and ordered uh, ha- uh, Jerry or, or ordered Harvey Norman Webster. Well, does he does he mean that he's that's like a good behaviour bond that if he does anything within three years he's going to be even even more strife? Well, the Is way that what he means? well the way the article was worded and where did this article come from? I'll tell you, the Australian, which is probably half decent. Well, we all know that journalistic integrity at most newspapers in this country is second to none. But, uh, but anyway, he, it says here, Justice Collier ordered Harvey Norman restrain. So restrain. Why not just stop? Why, why try and restrain yourself? Just stop it. From engaging in just, similar... Just stop it. Like you tell your kids. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> in similar conduct for three years. There you go. Okay, three well years. Let's, let's just uh, mark that in the diary, please. Yep. Three years from now. When Maybe. we're doing uh, episode... Um, 796. 500. 517. Maybe that's why um, Jerry's laughing. Yeah, three years. I only got three years. <laughs> I do that on my head. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's why I'm bald. I'll just buy some racehorses while I'm waiting. 
Yeah, that's right. Well, okay. Anyway, and uh, you got any more stories, Eric? While you're over yes, there? mate. Just a couple of quick ones. Yep. The a few weeks ago, we thought we spoke about the original Apple contract that was um, for sale at Sotheby's. Yes, well, yes. This week sold for one point six million dollars mm. to a mystery mystery buyer. There is there is um, rumor that Mr. Zuckerberg bought it. Okay. Um, well, what what we'll else what else so are these what else these people got to do with their loose change? Why not collect these things, eh? Well, well, why not? Mate, if I had a, a if I had a, a lazy one point six lying around that I didn't really need, I would have bought it. Mm. Yeah, so would I. That'd so be ace on. to have. Yes. That'd be ace. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Next one. Yes. Three three quarters, and I, look, I don't know whether or how I feel about this. I, I thought it was a lot higher. Three quarters of Australian homes have broadband. Do you find that a little bit low? Seventy five percent. Uh, three quarters of Australian homes have broadband, but but mm. then once again, once again, what how how is broadband defined? You know what I mean? ADSL one. Or above. ADSL one at five twelve is classified as broadband. Shouldn't be. Oh, uh, Wi Fi. I, I mean, um, I mean, um, three G. No, no, just home households. Radio, right, right, right. So I'm th- I'm thinking fixed fixed line, ADSL or cable. It says here seventy three percent of all Australian households have broadband access. ACT has the highest proportion of broadband access with eighty three percent. We know why. Politicians don't do any work. They're on the freaking internet. <laughs> but but also like I know like a lot of the younger people. Uh, and like say I could say probably on I could count people I know probably numbering five off the top of my head uh, just yeah. have mobile broadband and that's it and they use the dongle at home they use their phone right. out right um, well I don't know anyone that does that but I'm sure there are lots of them that do because people in the ADSL areas they they're going for this alternative because they don't want to pay the thirty bucks line rental just to have the internet. That's Did right, and I think that's why ADSL is, is falling. Mm. And that's why I think this is where Telstra is coming in with, with their bundles, because those bundles that you signed up for, you can have that bundle in ADSL, for example, if you're you know, close enough to the exchange and you don't want cable. Yeah. You can have that same bundle for 88 bucks. Yes. And including, including line, line rental. Now, really, how long mm. ago, you know, you know, that's equivalent to 30 bucks line rental, so you're paying $55 Fifty something dollars for your internet for two hundred gigs. It wasn't that long ago that fifty five dollars was getting you five gigs. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I know. So it's... that's and that's where Telstra are going to really come in and you know just basically say you know what we're gonna we're gonna do better and they are mm. they're doing well. They're starting to do good now, aren't they? Like I'd, I'd be like yeah. I'm paying what thirty two thirty three dollars for my landline just to have ADSL, which costs me fifty. So I'm paying eighty. Yep. 80, what's that, three? $83, 83. For, for internet. That's right, and you're getting 10 megabits down compared to the 100 megabits you're going to be getting next week. Yeah, well, I don't get it installed till the 12th of January. But, um, right, okay, well, next month. Next yes, month. that's right. Are you going to cancel your ADSL? Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. good, yep. good yep. stuff. I can't run. Now, just continuing on that, Tasmania had the lowest share with 65%. I won't comment. Yeah, geez, and they got uh, the NBN. What's that? And they got the MBN down there. Yeah, good one, right? <laughs> uh, social networking was the most popular, was one of the most popular activities on the internet. The younger age groups led the way with 88% of 15 to 17 year olds using the internet for social networking, while 86% of the 18 to 24 year olds did social networking. Mm. So there you go. Yeah, look, everyone's using it. it. Look, everyone's on the internet. They, they might not be um, cabled into the house, but we're, look, we're in it. We're on it now, mate. We're on it right now, as we speak. We're on it right now, as we speak. So it's two out of two. That's a hundred percent. Yes. Now I think um, I opened up a couple of emails today. I think the head's got a letter. He's got some more letters. He's got the ans- letters and an answer. I reckon you've got to get the Blues Clues um, theme song for. You no, know, we've got a letter. Yeah, yeah, and play that when. Um, when but the, that might be against copyright. Are. Well, it probably will be, <laughs> but that's never stopped you before. Yes, it has. <laughs> it's never stopped you. <laughs> okay, all right, that's a different story altogether. But anyway, anyway, the head's going to get a voice next year. He's decided he needs a oh, voice he? different to mine. 
Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, Eric. Have you the head? The head right, is on. The head. I've got the letter here. Yes. Dear head, my internet connection has become slower than it should. I think someone may be stealing my Wi-Fi or something. Any tips? I'm using a Win 7 32-bit machine. Mark from Doyleson. You got well, the answer, mate? Well, internet stealing. <laughs> I just saw your picture on the <laughs> Internet stealing is very, very bad. <laughs> now, well, well, number one, password protect your Wi-Fi. Yes, yes. So I think, um, yeah, well, password protect and all that sort of stuff. But uh, what's his letter say goes, uh, my internet has become slower than it should. I think someone may be stealing my Wi-Fi or something. Any tips? Okay. So probably, yes, just secure up your modem. But I think what you're actually getting at there is sounds like that your computer's running slower or something like that. So fix your computer up to start with. Uh, you could have a look at malware or spyware could be infecting your computer to cause it to go a bit slower. So your best to download now, a good one is malware bytes. B Y T E S. B Y T E S. Yes. Yes. Just Google that and run that. That is an excellent little free little little one, and it's that good. I even paid it. I, I used it for free, and it is that good. I thought, look, I use this all the time to to disinfect computers and uh, get rid of uh, some really nasty little viruses and malwares. And I, I just said, look, man, here, I'm going to subscribe to that because it, it, it really. How much? Out. How much you pay for that? Oh, I think it was about sixty bucks. Okay. It wasn't expensive. Well, what about if he wants to? Um, would it be, Would you? Would you uh, suggest that he wipe? If that doesn't work, that he wipes his hard drive as well, possibly, um, and then you know back everything up, of course, um, yeah. on a on a on a disk or an online service. Yeah. And, look. Uh, reformat, reinstall, put malware bytes on it. Off you go. Yeah. Look, nothing beats a good format. Love them. Nothing, yep. nothing beats Sorry. a good format. It just takes time. But, uh, yeah, but you do that, probably run Google C Cleaner as well, run that through it. But also, like, as you, as you, um, you may, you may want to try this little answer. There's a little thing in the windows that can help you find if there's any nasty little things ch chewing out your internet. So it's called the netstat command. It has to be run from the DOS prompt. And what happens is it'll give you a list of all the open ports and what program is using them. So say, so I did this earlier today. Okay, so first of all, all you gotta do just quickly is you go to, you open up your command window, which is start button, and in the search bar, you type in CMD, right click on it, and then open it, run it as administrator, because nothing will work if you don't run this little thing as administrator. At the command prompt, type in N-E-T-S-T-A-T -T -T space hyphen A-B-F-5. Now, you might have to, uh, look, if, if, that, if you didn't catch that, just Google netstat and you'll get a couple of responses on what the, what the syntax is. So netstat, okay, control C to stop the program or just, to, or just to cross it out to close it up. But scroll up and down the output and you'll be able to see the programs currently listening on your port. So I had things like, things that you forget that you've got open, you know, like Dropbox. So it's got its little port. And it comes up, and it's always—it's just sitting in the background, just waiting. And it's just, you know, sending to and fro, to and fro, just going anything. I always like. disable that before I get on the um, podcast. What's that? The Dropbox. Oh, do you? I disable it, yep. I disable it. I always exit it completely so it's not doing anything. Yeah, I think I... And I've got Carbonite running as well. Yes. And so I disable that. Well, what I've done... Just for the podcast... Yeah, so what I've actually done for the podcast is I've actually got a, a special streaming profile where none of this loads up anyway. So, so that, right. that sort of makes it all good. But yeah, so uh, Google the that's that and just see the syntax, see how it works. And uh, yeah, it, look, it's not an easy fix. It might not be the right fix, but it's going to help you if you think your internet is, um, you know, if there's something funny going on. So I hope that helps whatever your name is. Mark from Mark. Doyle, Doyleson. That's down near... Where's that? Central Coast, New South Wales, somewhere. That's uh, Central Coast, yeah. Central All right. Coast, yeah. So good on you, Mark. Hope that helps. Let us know how it goes. But um, good stuff. All right. Now I think um, I think uh, that's that's it for the head this week. He's gonna he's gonna be back again pretty soon. Probably probably next week to wish us all a merry Christmas. I will be too. So uh, <laughs> he'll get, we'll see you next week. But next year he's gonna get a voice. So people that listen don't get all confused. Okay. Is he going to be a girl or a boy? Oh, he's a bit of a fairy, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no doubt.
<laughs> no, 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 no idea. No idea. All right. So I think we're coming to the end of the show. You got any more stories? I might just have a quick one. If you've, if I'm you've got completed. No, you're completed? All I'm right. completed. Well, last one I know, this is, I don't know why I find these interesting, but I just do. Um, look, I probably never really look at them. I just, they just go into my brain and I think, well, I know that that's there if I ever want it. It's Cambridge University puts Isaac Newton papers online. Like, uh, cool. Yeah, try and read it though. But um, the notebooks in which Sir Isaac Newton worked out the theories on which much classical science is based have been put online by the Cambridge University. More than 4,000 pages have been scanned, including his annotated copy of Principia Mathematica, containing his yep. containing the laws of motion and gravity. Newton wrote mainly in Latin and Greek. That's probably why I don't understand what he's saying there. Uh, the scientific language of his time and was reluctant to publish. The university plans to put almost all of its collection online for us little information-hungry little tech heads to suck up. So there you yep, go. Very good. Yeah, so is that something that you 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 read, sit down and try and read, Eric, or is it just? Well, I'll have a look at it. Um, There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, Latin and Latin and Greek is. Um, look, I probably won't understand any Greek, but I'll probably get I'll get around Latin okay. It's very before, messy, before, isn't it? Before my head explodes. <laughs> what Latin? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll be able to understand Latin. Yeah, right. But you can see you can read some in English, but like this one I've got yes, up here. He mixes it up, doesn't he? Yes, that's what, probably why I can't understand it. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think he mixes it up a bit. Mm, mm. But that's all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, the mind of a genius. Yeah, so that's all right. Yeah, I, I enjoy reading about those things, you know, and all those scrolls apparently was over the weeks, back a couple of weeks ago, we discussed about all getting put up online. It's all good. All good. Yep, all uh, good. Newspapers, that's right, the other week. Newspapers, all these 8th, 6th, 17th, 18th right. century the, newspapers. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, just yeah. one... Just a quick tip, um, which I knew about this a while ago, but I've rediscovered it. I haven't used it, and I rediscovered it on the weekend. A lot of us use Google Docs, correct, Glenn? Oh, yes. Yes, almost right. daily. Now, have you, to access your Google Docs, you have to log into on a browser, right? Yes. Docs.google.com, log in with your Gmail address, and off you go, correct? Yes. Right. Now, would you like to have a, a network drive mapped to your Google Docs so you can just click on it? And yes. it opens up in Word. Yes, I would. Right. Well, I've got that. Okay. And nice. go, everyone go to this address. It's free. Go to – it's Google Google this. It's called Gladinet Cloud Desktop. G-L-A-D-I-N-E-T. Yes, I've – G-L-A-D-E-D-I – sorry, start again. G-L-A-D-I-N-E-T Cloud Desktop. Yes, this is. So I've, I've, is. I've actually used this. Now, I, I yes, use. Install that, log in your thing, and now I've just got a map network drive to my Google Docs, and I don't have to log into my browser if I don't want to. Mm. Just put in your details, off you go, and it just maps, maps to your drive, and you can access it like it's a normal drive on your, on your system, and it's brilliant. Yes, it is. Oh, look, I have used this, and I used to use it for SkyDrive. And th that's yeah. this gave me the SkyDrive. Yeah, you can drive. use it for SkyDrive. You can. Mm. The good thing is you can add SkyDrive. You can add Google Docs to it. There's a, there's a lot of little, you know, like yeah, cloud, cloud yeah. services you can attach to it. That's right. That's right. And it does yeah. work. It does work really well. It does work. You can uh, schedule backups. You can schedule uh, things to happen. It's um, it's it, it's really really well done. It's good. And yeah, if you just want to, yeah, as Eric said, a little drive map, a drive letter. It's Oh, it makes it so That's much brilliant. easier. Yeah, it's good. Yep. It's really Drive good. V, I've got it on. Oh, yeah, I had mine as, I don't know why, I think, up the end yep. there somewhere. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's, um, what's um, Oz, Aussies in the chat room saying? Eric's from Sydney. He already knows it. What are you talking about, Aussie? Aussie la? Uh, he must be talking about how you know Latin. And, um, yeah, I think Aussie's from, Aussie's from Melbourne. And he, he's, he's, having, right. he's having a go at you because you are always having a go at you. You should know Spanish then, Aussie. You're from Melbourne because you're that's Mexico. <laughs> Aussie's got the Optus issues. Uh, Aussie, let me tell you, I joined Optus cable, one of the hundred megabits down. I had it for three days. I rang him up, said, "Take it away. This is crap." But you know, the unfortunate thing is that's the only thing available where he is. 
He has yes. to. He has to that run is, with that it. That is bad. Yeah, mm. that's not. No good. good. No good at all. All right. I reckon uh, that's about it. That'll do us. So, that's about where, it. where can we contact you, Eric? You can contact me, uh, Eric at netchannel the number two dot com, or Eric Franco E R I K F R A N C O on the Twitter. And you can also get him at eric at aussietechheads.com.au. The same yes. with Will and Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Um, you can get me at Aussie Tech he- at Aussie Tech Heads on the Twitter and Will at Mr. Tomkinson. Give him a tweet. See if he's still alive wherever That's Will right. is up in... Where's he? Ask him there? how it's Ipswich? hanging. <laughs> Ask him how his mangoes are. All right. That'll do, <laughs> that'll do it for now, I think. So, Chewing the Fat. Uh, the Chewing the Fat's back now that Eric's system is not played up once tonight. So, we'll soon find out how good it is after the show. But oh, yeah. This the, the real test in 10 minutes, boys. Chewing, Hang in there. Chewing the Fat and also uh, Eric's little podcast setup. Quite interesting if you want to have a look and see what he's looking at while he's looking at you. <laughs> All right. Until next week, <laughs> it's good night from me. And it's bye from me. Okay. Bye-bye. See you guys. Good show. All right.